on to the LEC for the very last game of this week, the first week of spring. G2 versus KC. Hey, are you going to let him do that? No. Where's the noise? Come Where's on. the noise? Come on. Come on. <laughs> them. I think G2 have just found this kind of winning formula that works. They're trying to play much more focused around these late game scaliers in the bot lane and I mean it makes sense right Han Sama was at one point considered the best AD carry in Europe. He's had his struggles but still putting that into him I think is the best way to go about things and I think as well you get facilitator jungles that enable that very well and even the individual performers as well when I look at like say caps on something like an Ari like he's had these pop-off moments and I think though overall it's given G2 a direction in which they can kind of rally around when it comes to the mid game. Lovely thank you I have found a couple of fans here as well. This is Thomas. Now, Thomas is French, but he's supporting G2. Explain that. I mean, G2 is like the best team in the GLC. And even if uh, Carmin he has like many trophies in LFL, many trophies in your master, LEC is our playground and we are like, just the best. We're gonna smash them today. You said even when you're in Paris, you just go watch G2 games. Of course. And like, uh, for, we are currently uh, developing as uh, G2 fans in French. Like, come in the G2 Samurai. Like, we're trying to organize some variant party and many things for the French fans, so yeah. Okay, I see it. So basically, Lore, ils sont en train de voler les fans, donc. En train de voler les fans, they're stealing the fans, but I, I mean, I hope you're gonna enjoy your time on the G2 side, uh, Frenchman, because I have the rest of the French people here supporting KC throughout this week, but now they're winning, and we know that it's been a difficult winter for them. Dag, 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 what are you doing here? Actually, you're on oh, the other side. You know, what, yeah, what no, is KC no, no, about? No, I was never over there. I don't know. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. What, can you tell me about KC? What is new for them in spring? Well, yeah, I think they just kind of found a winning formula. Like, a lot of it kind of focused around that bot lane. Like, at one point, Upset was considered one of the best AD carries in Europe. So, I think putting that focus on late game carries makes a ton of sense for this team. And then as well, you got like junglers that are facilitators that's working well. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> as a, and I think it's kind of setting up very well for, hey, we can try and have these individual performers step up. And when I look at a guy like Saken, he's had incredible performances on things like Aurelian Sol. I think it's just a formula that gives them direction come the mid game. It is a very specific and unique style yeah. indeed here for KC. And I have the KC fans, of course, the Blue Wall is here, as they are every week, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. What makes you think? What makes you think that KC is back on tracks and that what happened in winter is right behind you guys? First, the two last games of the winter were pretty like good. So we had like good bases, coaching staff changes. And first game was really promising. Yesterday was a mistake, but we like believers. We, we win on every game, so why not? Do you have anything to say to the lonely French G2 fan over there? I mean, why did you choose this? <laughs> so, join sorry us, for join my us. Why did you choose indeed? I don't know. Wrong side. Sharks, anything to say maybe? I don't know. Yeah, they they want to make you pay for your sins, it seems like. They're really mad at you. You don't you don't care. You don't give a fuck, I right? I don't care. I mean, we're, we're going to win. <laughs> so I don't care. <laughs> All right. Uh, on that note, so let's head over to our casters. <laughs> we were expecting perhaps hysterics. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to get the crowd rolled up. Welcome back to the casting guest for the last game. One that has turned into a banger. Now, Vettius and myself, Asterix, you'd come into this one thinking, hmm, maybe this isn't going to be a good game if you're looking at winter, right? Thinking it's going to be one-sided. But fair. Casey yesterday, I mean, there was a bit of a flip where, you know, against Fnatic, you're like, actually, Fnatic were turning a bit of an oddball. And Casey could have actually won that game. For sure. They could have been 2-0 up. So as we round out our first week of spring, I think this one's going to be a bit of a Barney. I know you're using that word a lot today, videos, but this one truly fits the bill when we consider the talent on both sides. I mean, I think we're seeing some surprises today. And uh, oh, yeah. what we've Which learned one? is that early game leads don't always convert they into don't matter. wins. Ever. Now, we jump Smolder. immediately into the pick and man. Now, remember, G2's happy to leave Smolder up. Because they'll take it. Because they will both take it, but also they have an answer into it as well. Now, with this every ban, maybe they just want to lock in the smolder for themselves. I mean, why not? It's available. 
And that's exactly what they're going to do. So what is Carmine Corp's response? Does Upset play the Cogmore himself? Does he have another AD carry? Because bear in mind, that's five. That is five AD carry gone yep. in this game. So now that we've had all off the board, as you said, we're just going to consider the options. There's no range to come through with the virus as well. As we look on the other side now, things like the Nautilus still open. We've seen Nautilus a very high priority today coming into 14-5. Orianna often banned away. When we talk about the Azir not being up and available, control mages that stand in the S to A tier. Right now, you have to think, well, Orianna's probably one of them. I definitely agree. We know that Caps is happy to play Nico into it. Of course, depending on what junglers you go, things like Ari can also be very effective. Yep. But let's see where things go. Carmine Corp. Oh, they're going to go for the Senna, so they're going to try and match scaling for scaling. Senna will have a lot of range into the late game. Front to back style composition could very well suit Carmine if that is the direction they're going. We're looking at potentially something like a Sejuani in the jungle. Like hovering a number of different junglers right now. They're going to lock in the Jarvan. Okay. okay. You expect this to go into the jungle position. Now, before I jump to conclusions, I have to remind everyone Smolder is a flex pick. Yep. If any team is willing to flex it, G2 is definitely one of them. If Broken Blade plays anything top, you That's know, true. it's kind of like Wonder. A hundred percent. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see where this Smolder does end up going. But G2, they could just lock in the Nautilus now themselves if they want to. You know that. Carmine likely want Tom Kench or Nautilus for yep. themselves. But the Nico, they want to guarantee that they have that answer into the Orianna available. Now, if Carmine Corp want to, they can lock in the Nort and then they can look to ban away things like the Braum, the Renata. Annoying things that could get in the way of Nautilus doing Nautilus things. Because I will say that even just giving Set a Nort outside of the ban point there, Betty, as Tom Kench just gets locked in, it's okay. going to say really great engage, but this is more like an LPL style of bottom lane here. I think Targumus had a lot of issues with some of the engaged supports last split. It is nice to see him on, you know, a bit of a mixed bag, as you call him, more defensive bag in the time. Kench, and as you said, on top of that, maybe getting rid of some supports that deal with it. Might not be the Nautilus in play, but getting rid of the Blitz that could deal with the time. That could be a nuisance here for some of the comp. Let's see how they round things out. Blitz crank going to be banned away. Xin Zhao taken away from Carmine Corp. We know that Bo... In my head, I was like, it's something like a Kindred or a Grave, something that he's thinking about. But they do need a little bit more engaged, a little bit more of a front line. Maokai Sejuani is kind of where my head is at right now for yep. KC. Question is, did G2 think in the same direction, or do they think that Bo wants Back. to be a little more aggressive? This is definitely sending us up for a Cassante top yep. lane, that's for sure. His BB's answer into it was the Zack. It Usually. worked consistently in winter. That it did. Of course, Zack. A very powerful top laner still. We saw it coming out from Elioia in the jungle. Oh, so they're just going to ban the Cassante away. Okay, they're actually going to leave that jungle pool open a little bit more. We've already seen a Lee Sin today, and I was just about to say, Bo, he's definitely the type of player he's, that yeah. would love to get his hands on it. He's a great carry jungler, historically. When I casted him in it's FPX, in, in FPX Bo, this would be his pick. That and Olaf. Um, I also think that pick. it's just great into Jarvan. Uh, early skirmishing is just a very effective uh, matchup in favor of the Lee Sin. You also have a lot of disengaged tools to like kick the Nico ultimate away potentially. And, yep. uh, I wouldn't say that Lee Sin Oriana is like the strongest mid jungle combo, but there's definitely potential there once the Oriana gets level six. They have a lot of damage available to them. The Gragas being locked in definitely suggests it's going to be their blind pick top laner for Broken Blades. So how are they going to round out this draft? What are they looking for? Perhaps a little more engage, a little more utility. Some supplementary engage from someone like Mickey X. Okay, so we know that Smolder is going bot, as we already did. We know Gragas is going top as well, even though Charmin in the past has gone top. But for Cabo, he has red side counter pick. And it feels like with the least in locked in, as you said, not as much setup in the other lanes. This could be the lane we look towards, or we could just look at Bo playing spoiler to try and counter gank this entire game and get the lane through safely. Yeah, my, my only uh, issue with Casey's draft right now is that they're engaged in the easiest. Um, Very true. You do have ways to start fights, but they're not straightforward, you know. Uh, you have flanking opportunities, maybe if Oriana can find that Shockwave, maybe if Cabo has that Mega Nar and he can find a good ultimate, but... Um, 
G2 have a lot of easier ways to start fights. Yep. You have the Gragas ultimate to create either a pick or just disruption in the middle of a fight. Jarman is EQ ult. You have Nico follow up. Like there's a lot of wombo combo potential on the side of G2. When we think about playing around these neutrals, uh, in terms of a straight front to back, I, I look G2's comp overall, and I see a lot of potential there, but I also acknowledge the potential scaling on the side of Casey's bot side of the map. The center Tom Kench is something that, when it gets enough range, can be very difficult to deal with, and uh, I'm excited to see how this one plays out. But will G2 let Casey's bottom line get there? Because that's the problem. Like we saw yesterday in the Cogmore lane, G2 just flourish, popped off, and put all their attention on. That is, I look at their comp and I see dive, 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 and flap, dive. I see a lot of members that can go in and set up a miserable early game for KC. We set up the theme to see if their bottom lane can get through it. As we look to see if G2 can stay undefeated, wouldn't that be the, wouldn't that just be the natural case for our winter champions? I mean, G2 is the team that they will lose that game or two during the regular season. Of course they will. <laughs> but then they'll still go to MSI. They'll still find them. I mean, of course, they have locked a spot at MSI thanks to winning winter. There you go. But uh, they can cement that first seed if they can win spring as well. Yep. But this lane priority, I mean, seeing such a high priority in Jarvan surprised me. He did, of course, receive some buffs. But uh, I don't know if those buffs were enough to warrant such a high priority on the champion. Obviously, he's a champion. He's very good at early ganks. Super straightforward. He uh, <laughs> EQ into engage. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, Benny. I'm struggling to kind of get that into my brain. <laughs> the, the fans have come out. Yeah. <laughs> like, man. You know, KC fans are loud, but it encourages everyone else to step up their game. I think since KC have came into the LEC, everyone's like, man, we gotta, we got to put in more effort. Now look at this from Casey, a delayed invade onto the Raptors. Yes, indeed. Well, we're going to start there. What is Yikes' response? He obviously has information of this. Caps has to be a little cautious, but Cissé can return to lane. Shouldn't be in too much danger. Bragas is the new go-to safe blind pick top. Now, for those that remember the finals, Broken Blade gapped Mir win on this champion. He yep. had like a four-level lead in that 1v1. Um, so we know that he is, uh, he's good at the champ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, range matchups can be challenging, but for Gragas, I think he's one of the better ones because the amount of sustain he has on his W. Very true. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of what I expected in the early lane phase. Smolder doesn't have the strongest trading patterns, especially when paired up with a Rakan. It's very easy for Targamus to do this. So they're going to gain that prior on the bot side of the map. And Bo clearing out this entire bot side jungle. Yike, just going to focus on his top side. We talked about how this is a, an advantageous matchup for the Lee Sin, and Bo is really trying to take advantage of that. But also, leave this Smolder isolated. Don't give Yike the opportunity to actually invest in him early, or maybe yep. even try and attack Upset Antagonist. He's really enabling Upset Antagonist to be set up for success here within the first two minutes of the game. As Bo travels back to his bottom side. Uh, was in quite deep. Remember the start on the opposite side of the map? Yeah, Yike is going to translate that into a vertical map and top as well with a very pushed up cabo shard. So that is an angle to look at. As you said, the smolder, the investment, not going to be there with the slow push, with the control, thanks to Bo. Giving that center time the time that they want, giving the early game that KC definitely want as well. Wave gets pushed in. Targamus and Upset are going to be setting themselves up for the first plate as well. Getting close. That's flash for flash. That was Caps forcing it out of Saken. Nicely done. Bit of chat energy from Caps. As, as we, uh, I mean, Caps continues to have a great year. Yeah. He was M MVP quite by far in mid. Yes. Yeah, everyone said Caps is under turret. Is this an issue? Ignite down. Targamus wait a minute. knock up. Under turret, Casey pushed too far. Hunt Summer still has his flash available. He's waiting for upset to show, but Targamus now with no mana in the middle of no man's land is still a Tarm Kench. This is annoying. He does wow. good damage, but upset now has no summoners. I was not expecting that. I mean, Smolder, I get, when he gets level three, has more damage than you expect. Not that much more. I mean, <laughs> but Mickey with the knock up there, I think, is really what set it up. Yep. The Ignite coming through very quickly as well. They don't have that combat summoner on the side of KC. The heal being used early to disengage. Flash gets burnt from upset. And you talked about it uh, coming into this game, Hysterics. Will KC's bot lane be allowed just in the isolated 2v2? We were critical of G2's bot lane at the start of winter, but they've definitely found their form. 
they're looking to try and win as many of these lanes as possible. And they get the push in bot as well. Now remember, Targamus is the one absorbing the CS, but Senna loses salts. So it's still quite a big difference that's going to be created, considering that upset as he comes now, maybe lost two or three minutes, maybe not as big as I'm painting it out to be with the huge wave that now crashes in. But for KC still, that crash comes through, gives a bit of timing for Han Sama here, who should be going back to get some damage and amplify that lane further. Also giving Mickey time to see what he can do around it. Remember, Saken, no flash. Yep. Caps trading his in order to burn that summoner. Continues to have push here in mid. Yike, though, not looking to do anything too aggressive in this early game. If we think about lanes that he can play around, now that there are no summoners bot or mid, that's where we would expect Yike to be looking for a gank. Cabo going to continue to interrupt the base of Broken Blade. Hasn't gone base yet. Still has the TP available. Yike should gain information here on Saken doing this. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> enough. Uh, Bow gets out. First grab, remember, is still the EXP that you want. So one for two. But no one cares about it. Grubs are... Grubs are no, grubs. Grubs are grubs. EXP's great, but you know, in the long run, I'll say it again, dragons are everything. Well, it's currently available. Resets come through from Upset and Targamus mean that there's a window, this stacking wave for G2 to set for that objective. But I look at the minimap and look at this squad moving their way towards the Dragon and mid lane. Upset, Targamus and Bo all hovering around here, working together to get this vision and start off this objective. A Smolder, I'd be upset to see a member, probably of your extended family, getting attacked right now. So will G2 act on it? The biggest question is for Han Sama, Gonna get this wave push first, then move over. Yike is moving in as well. Hello, let's look topside. That's because there's an all in about to come through. Thank you, observers. Cabo Shard. No Mega Nar there, but Broken Blade again with good trades on his Gragas. What's in those barrels? Um, tasty beverage, one would imagine. One that is PG 13 plus. I imagine that too. But not 18. Well, Casey have been forced off of this. Caps getting level 6, making his way into the river. Casey were too hesitant to actually take that fight. Golf claps come through from the audience. Now one person really likes Hextech Dragons dying. <laughs> really big fan of that. Oh, I don't like that one. Broken Blade Force to use the ultimate. Took a turret shot. No flash available for Cabo Shard. Boomerang. Nah, good timing at the body slam as well. So, got some plan here. So he's got a bit of sustain. He'll be able to stay in the lane. A lot of sustain. That's a lot of mana back for Broken Blade. Yeah. Of course, CS advantage still exists for Cabo. As you would expect in the range of the matchup. On summer continues to stack up. 40 stacks right now. Not bad. Nothing too crazy. Have we kind of considered what is great at the moment? Maybe pausing that bow and look towards mid. Hang on, there's a flash bot side. Mum flies through. Remember, upset lost a bit of experience and almost dies because of it. Whew. The center falls out, but Han Sama and Mickey X, I mean, by themselves, the 2v2, they're just playing it well. They are. Mickey committing the flash. Yep. Knowing that Upset didn't have it available, of course he does get away with his life very low. There's no jungler here to play with them, so they can't really threaten a dive. Hansama getting lower and lower on mana. Unlikely that they're going to be able to convert this into much. Got a cookie though. Looks like he's not going to spend it though. Going to choose to go back to base. Bo is going to steal away camps from Yike. Yep. Good utilization of the pressure that he has from both mid and top. Saken moving over to assist with that. Yeah, still going to tick over to level 6. Ah, the uh, achoo <laughs> interrupting the bases there. Right. Aren't someone going to catch an entire wave? Look at this lead that's starting to be built in bot lane. Across the map, it's KC that hold on to the gold lead for now. If only just, I mean, 500, 400 gold. Cabot will extend that a bit. As with all that trading in topside with the TP burn before, he's able to get a turret plate. He's able to push and deny this wave by the most amount. Caps, count your minions, sake and nose. Good job. He's not fallen prey, but he does actually, because he flashes. So it doesn't matter if he knew he was a minion, because Caps got a summoner out of him. Yeah. Caps lost a lot of HP trying to set up that yeah, play. Worth. Uh, I mean, it definitely was. <laughs> Should be able to uh, heal that back. He still has his three biscuits. Don't obviously offer a huge amount of health, but it's better than nothing. I should heal. help with some of the mana issues. Given that he's so low right now, Mickey looking for something in the enemy jungle. Be quiet there. Thought KC fans left for nine minutes. Do that. <laughs> Trying to keep the energy high. Yet to, to find first blood. A little surprising considering it is G2. <laughs> Back True. to yesterday's game against Mad Lions. Koi. They were off to the races right from the get go with a cogmore that they were. But the aggression from Hansar and Mickey that is definitely not faulted in any way. 
They're going to get themselves their second plate. Senna in the mid lane. Yeah. The Han Summer's gold is only going to continue to climb. I mean, Targumus can't walk up to this by himself. They're going to bring the whole squad down, Betty. I just wonder, are G2 aware of this? There's no vision in River. A bit of danger Help. here comes the engage. Okay, Han Summer safe for now. Achu slows them down. Boaz kick available. And oh. flashes a flash on top with Sake and Shockwave. And Han Summer is better for it. Or should I say worse? Mickey up next. The range there. They tank it up. And all of a sudden, KC on the board with one big power play. What a wombo combo. The ball delivery system is a flashing blind monk. Great engage from KC. They find themselves first blood. They convert it into two. And while Caps will get a plate back, I think KC can be pretty happy with that one. Shutting this dragon down as early as they can. 1K now the gold lead. Look at it again, as you said. Great setup here with G2. Hard pushing bot. So what they'll do is they'll use the shockwave first and then Bo will flash at just the right time to make sure that it connects. Oh, Beautifully done wait. by Bo. He then kicks the dragon back. And uh, just very well played. They even hand the kill over to Upset. KC punishing the aggression from G2's bot side. Bit of frustration, hard to tell with Dylan Falco. Stone cold as ever. Yeah. His head's not in his hands and they're not getting frustrated. Um, or more frustration. I think it's okay. But I mean, Casey should be pretty happy with how this has started out. Pretty now, admittedly, we've seen Casey get leads before. And they haven't been able to always convert them. That's always been the challenge when playing against a team like G2. It's their mid game, which they took pride in last splits. They often talked a lot about it, the main focus area of improvement. And so we'll see how KC can keep up with them and their movements around the map. Because I think one of the big issues of KC was their mid-game last split, you know, the ability to hold leads. I think a lot of LEC teams, you could say the same. And the quite frankly, just poor decisions, right? They, yeah, they, they yeah. would They would pick poor Which fights. usually happen in the mid-game when people yeah. are fighting more, <laughs> you know? Sometimes they would like start these objectives and uh, Often you would just be left with question marks when it comes to KC, but yeah. let's see how they navigate this. We haven't quite entered the mid game just yet. We still have all these plates up. Laning phase still very important. Yet to see Yike do anything. When I think of Jarvan's, <laughs> I, I mean, true, quite frankly, just... I feel like the Jarvan is a champion uh, Has to do something. that needs to be doing something. You know, if he's just full clearing every, uh, every respawn of the camps, then I feel like that there were better options that you could have picked, you yep. know? Uh, I think one of the strengths of Jarvan is its early game utility. Um, but now, the Dragon Mean started off. Dra G2 already have the first one. Can they secure the second? Hansam in a bit of an awkward angle here. It is indeed. G2 are sitting in the pit. There's the flash from Minky, but he gets no one. Mum onto Targamus? I don't think so. They're going to dive on in. KC have already got the burn of ultis. Dragon goes down, but it's Pop Blossom on cap. Tries to save the plate. Maybe it's okay. Cataclysm out. Flashes forward. Targamus saved. Upset though. KC are fine with this. Oh, they're damn fine. Broken Blade has come in late and he'll die late as well. Just like that, it's G2, six and zero down. Bo completely making fun of G2 and Saken securing a triple kill. KC were looking for a different version in spring and I think they've gone and found it. Six to zero in kills right now, a 3K gold lead. And it starts off with a blunder initiation from Mickey. So he cut, look at the reaction here from Bo. Ward over the wall, sidesteps the engage. Mom effectively useless. Caps oh. now getting chipped away from the HP of Saken. A nice flash engage locks them up. But then the consume from Targonus keeps Upset alive. Look at this play from up, uh, Bo. Nice kick yep. to get him close in range of Han Sama. Cabo then comes over the wall and Saken there to finish off the kill. Very well played fight from KC. The coaching staff naturally elated to get a win against G2 would be massive to start off their week two and one, considering they started zero and three in winter. Oh yeah, completely different KC is kind of our story. However, it's got to get through the motions of the game, right? We've got a 3K gold lead. The problem is G2 can muck about and then people find out. People find out they're up a canoe, no, up a river without a paddle <laughs> when they go up against G2. And that's, of course, giving them preface because they've been in the league for so long because they continuously do it. But for now, we praise KC and we look at this play and think, man, Saken is the beneficiary. Four and zero on this Oriana, two items, and of course, 
just about to be two items that needlessly large. They're going to lose Herald as well. For G2, they're just observers. They're spectators to this. And KC pick up yet another objective. Mickey has to get out of there. And with the Herald, you have to think that there's going to be an open turret sooner or later. The only air of skepticism I have. I gave the air of skepticism. No, it's not even just G2. It's just in the previous two games, we've seen this exact situation before. But there's no Nautilus this time. But there is a smolder. Ah. <laughs> well, that could be an issue. Yeah, but that could be an issue. Senna. Or I mean, you're definitely failing. right. I mean, Casey openly left the Smolder up, and they said, we believe that we have a champion that can match in terms of scaling. Yep. Obviously, Upset, so far, having a very solid game. Don't let his CS be the main determining factor, of course. Tom Kench, the one receiving all of that farm. Yep. Senna just picking up here and there. But overall, Casey naturally in a great spot. They're going to drop the Herald top. Going to try and unlock some of these outer towers. Get in. And put more pressure onto G2. The whole family gets out. Like, it's like a clown car. That it is. You know, like, ten of them get out. Dragon, excuse me, turret goes down. Completely different objects in the game. But that is first turret of the game, by the way. First brick is going to be shattered by KC top wall caps. Going to get this push in the bottom side. Try and get a trade. I think bot. Uh, is going to be a little bit of a hard task with Targamus on the way with Saken as well. I mean, a lot of damage was done to that tower thanks to the laning phase of Hans and Mickey. Also true. We'll see. Targamus is just going to act as wave clear, I would imagine. Hans Summer being sent over to mid lane. Got a number of stacks, 154. That's, that's a lot, actually. I think that's pretty good for 16 minutes, for sure. What right now, think, we wait. What do you think the inspiration for Tom Kench was in the game? You think it was like a Pokemon? You think it was like Licky Tongue? They just thought, man, this would be cool. Put no, I don't. <laughs> you, when you think of Tom Kench, you think Licky Tongue. That's do. what you think. <laughs> I remember Super. I remember um, Nintendo 64 Pokemon Stadium. There's a game, you know, there's Licky Tongue. You'd eat sushi. I do remember that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're old, man. We're <laughs> it's not that bad. There's still be people out there who are like five years younger who had the same experience. You know, and you eat the. Um, I think he ate the wasabi, I, and then Licky Tug has a really bad time. <laughs> That's what I think every time he reaches out to a champion, he's like, man, that wouldn't taste good. Uh, probably not. But yeah, that's what goes through my brain. So. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. Your brain is uh, a unique one, that's Thank for you. sure. That's, that's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, Yank yet to really have impact so far in this game. Yeah, saying you, that zero you said, kills. You said I mean, I'm, I did, like, yeah, I'm not anything. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the cataclysm, what we saw bot in front of Dragon, was the first time we've seen something done. Maybe top side is going to change. Capa shot. Top used. Flashes away. They get a free flash. TP response. Broken Blade waiting for it though. Explosive cast in hand. It's only Targa. So. And this will leave the Dragon. Well. In an awkward spot, because Targamus is now TP top, but Yike is still here, so... Oh, it doesn't get it. Doesn't get the knock and be flashed for that. G2 also teleporting for this. Cabo's out with the minion wave. Flash Ooh. from Caps doesn't connect. Pop doesn't connect! Failure after failure from G2. It's just going pear-shaped. A comedy of errors as G2 failed to connect any CC on a Cabo. He gives him the thumbs up and shows, yeah, not today. That's going to be an easy dragon secured for KC on the other side of the map. Upset left to solo farm in that bot lane, chipping away at that tower as well. And so much invested. Flash from Caps, flash from Yike, TP from Caps. Ultimate used. Cabo forced to flash himself, but uh, KC feeling very confident. You have to feel like after it, that sequence of errors, like, Cabo's just gonna be laughing. He's gonna oh, be yeah. like, oh, we're in their heads, lads. You know, like, you gotta feel confident after that. Yeah, not him. But G2, I love how at the start of this game, you're like, you know, G2 every now and then in the split have, like, one of these kind of games. Um, oh, they do. They, this, this could they be lost one. to Rogue last split. <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. I mean, here, not to Did they lose the KC? I feel, I've completely blanked. Was that one of their last games of the split? You'd like me to find out, wouldn't you? I've completely forgot. I know KC won two Bro, games. Bettius, I don't even know what I had for breakfast yesterday. Don't blame yourself, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I honestly don't remember how I got here. So, uh, G2 versus KC. No, they did beat them. Okay, they, okay. G2 lost to Rogue, as you said. You know, that was the, the, the comedy game. Vitality as well you can put in there because 
Vitality ah, last Vitality. Well the same. Yes, 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 yes. But, okay. But no, on your point, I mean, this is, this is G2. And I know a lot of people at home will be like, ah, you guys just give excuses to G2. Well, they keep winning. That's the problem. <laughs> they keep winning, like, playoffs, and they keep winning finals. They're already going to MSI. The first team confirmed for MSI. It's the it's the benefit of the doubt. But, like, yeah. in this position, obviously, KC, it, this is it's their, their game, game to lose, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, with the, the composition they have, I think they're in a great spot. Senna, is it 70 stacks herself? You know, we were talking about so much Hansama stacks. Like, they're a little small on your screen, but you can see them next to Upset's portrait, just above his level. Same for Hansama. 200 is on his icon. And 71 now for Upset. When they reach those late game points, it's 225 for Hansama. About 100, 120 for Upset. Mom gonna be called. Good job in the wave. I mean, she's often used, like, it, it can be very difficult to siege against a small isn't, isn't that sad? Just call her when, you, you know, you can't be bothered to touch the wave. You're like, ah, mum will do it. <laughs> isn't that the story? Like, that is the sad story. The game of story. You just, you just leave your dishes on the side and think, mum will do but it. Mum will do uh, it. <laughs> You'll be right. She'll clean this up. It was Mother's Day, of course, uh, at least in the UK on Sunday. Shout out to all the mums out there. Oh, props to all mums. Yeah. Was it actually? I don't think yeah, in the UK well, it was. Yeah, in the UK, that's why. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not a bad. It's not son. the same ever in the world, which has always confused me. Well, I don't know why they don't just do it. You know, do it the same. It makes sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, you would think so. Like, but then, like, zone, there's also zone. questions about daylight saving time, my friend. I still don't understand that. Well, it's different. You just put your clock back an hour. But that's fine. Time zones make sense. You know, okay, time zones world. make sense. In general, <laughs> yeah. Daylight saving time could be a big argument. But, <laughs> but national holidays. Always have to wonder that one. Is true. Look, I just have to say in this game, nothing's happening unless KC really want it to happen. That's here. correct. G2 are just on the defense. Targum flashed for that. I don't okay. think he needed to, but I right. didn't either do I. So he gets sneezed on as a result. And Han Summer with his next wave will have full stacks. I so, feel like at 20 minute mark, that's still pretty good. Ideally, KC would love to take this tower down because yep. it's easier to move into the enemy jungle when you when you unlock that. You can see KC getting a bit of vision now, and that's immediately going to be cleared out by the uh, the uh, Scryer's blue. Of course, enhanced thanks to the chem salt we have on the rip. Cap's finally going to secure G2's first tower of the game. Yeah. And again, lies in the problem. Mid game of G2, their strength. But KC, they just keep killing me. Are we okay? Sorry, I just realized Deathcap second forsaken, and Caps was like, okay, Deathcap second oh, for yeah, me as well. Death as well. <laughs> so both these mid lane mages are going to be doing a lot of damage. Caps, I wonder if he's going to have it on this next base. Yep, let's find out. There, surely. Oh, yep. there it is. All right, so two items. Two items. Very big spike for him. Dragon spawning in a minute's time. Now, G2 could afford to give this one over. Maybe they sit there and say, you know what, we just want to scale more. We have Smolder on our side. Caps still wants a few more items before we force a fight. Um, they have that choice. The question is, are they in the same mindset as us? Do they think that they need to uh, fight this dragon or are they happy to concede it? Because they, they could trade it for like a top tier one, for example. Maybe they actually trade it for the mid tier one. Both mid towers still being up 22 minutes in is obviously a very long time. Saken has pushed in that top wave, has the TP available to him, but is already going to start making his way down to join with the rest of his team. Cabo actually abandoned that bot wave, a little cautious because he doesn't have full information as to where everyone is. Cap's now being spotted on top, should help him. He's now moving over towards mid. That will give them a numbers advantage and a bit of deeper vision towards this bot side jungle. Well, let's just remember for KC, as they move down, again, we're questioning whether G2 are going to look at this. If this turns into a fight, remember the engage. Kabashat, obviously, with the person that needs to be relied upon, sitting on the Mega Narva. He's not hitting Dragon. He's letting it wear down a bit and finding out if G2 are coming in on this. Is now with the vision on the side, G2 are threatening, but they're nowhere nearby. Yike is off the back here on the Raptors. Dragon's going to be gone. Broken Blaze is going to try and do something. Explosive cars. Close. But it is Bo who secures for the second camp. So the cross map is, in fact, just going to come through from G2. They'll take the top tier one equalize the towers throughout the game. The goal difference hasn't really extended anymore for KC. Obviously, they found some great fights in the early game, but off the back of that, it has been a very slow affair. Targamus, no Quickness. flash, remember. Remember this next queue here. Mum once again. Targamus is getting burnt down. He's in the Cataclysm, but he's not dying. Upset steps forward, gets a couple of stacks for himself, and for G2, they don't have the damage yet, especially not to take on this time camp. Your cap's on the flank. He's cautious, and he should rightfully be so. Bo was just there, ready. They thought they could punish Targamus, far too tanky. When Saken does arrive, Yike was forced to flash away because the shockwave was coming through. 
Nike was able to dodge away from it though. No kills secured by G2. Casey hold on to their lead for now. They keep their mid lane tower alive, and now they've equalized the dragons. The game will likely return to a neutral state as farm continues to come through from either side. And you ultimately have to question, who does this favor more? Upset, very close to 100 stacks. Of course, Hunt's armor, 262 though. And uh, I've been very afraid of Senna late games ever since she's been released, yep. right? She's a terrifying champion in the late game. But we've got so... Oh, Mickey. What are we doing here? Trying to get out now as he flashes away, I believe. No, he actually, yes, he does. Sorry, a bit of a spectator delay. Mickey does get out, but no flash available for this engage of Rakan. But uh, yeah, I, I wonder who uh, who is scarier, Smolder or Senna? That is a great question. Well, I mean, Senna keeps getting range. Mum, once again, you got to think with how many times Mum gets called, that's got to be Dad at some point, right? Nope, because it's called Mum. Yeah, but still, nope. like, Mum's cooldown is not that long. There's no way. <laughs> Call the father, uncle, <laughs> somebody <laughs> deal with this, bro. There's no way whatsoever as Cap tries to get a Tangle Barbs out, upset, tags him, and tag him again. Nordus bow. Mickey's coming back in, but remember, he just burned his flash. I really like the way in which Upset used the wards to then apply the Q to connect on to uh, uh, Cap's there. Of course, can't really convert it into much else. Casey just kind of dancing around. Scaling continues. 102 stacks now hit for Upset. The 80 carry level difference is obviously quite significant. Yeah. Respect. As you rightly said, the uh, rapid fire cannon coming through for Han Summer should be very close to completing that. Base yet, so we'll just wait for that base timing. Because again, I was pointing to that video because I'm like, man, three items in order with rapid fire, the Q, extra range. Finally, siege onto this. They're looking for the oh, fight. Oh, it's perfect! Oh. It's perfect! It's the Thunderdome! KC knocked around, sent around, and as the burn follows through, seconds up next, spitting hot fire and spitting the dirty sneeze from Han Summer. Cabo runs away as well, he had no Megana. And all it takes is one fight in the mid game, all it takes is one moment in the mid game, and G2 are back. And this is what we talk about when it comes to G2. They've earned that pedigree, they've earned that right that you can never really afford to count them out. A great fight found in the mid lane. KC will caught completely by surprise. The Baron is going to be unlocked. No jungler, no smite. Can KC stop this from being secured? Baron's going to go down. All it takes is a smite. Yike can't let it go, and he won't. As now low health bars bring KC in to try and get a fight off the back. And Mickey is taken out. So only four Barons left. As KC continue to chase up. Cap's now out with the Mega Blast Cone. Cabo flashes Tangle Barb. Caps dies too. How much else can they get onto Broken Blade? Is Targa alone? No, Cabo's about to go to Mega. Waiting to fight this off. Oh. This is too far forward. Targa can still get executed with the shield down. Mum flies through. But no Q oh. is Cabo. Flies over his teammates. And now Baron be damned. Dyke comes in, makes it a yakety stack. We're dancing around. Bow's there. Flag and drag. Shockwave dead under the turret. What is going on, everyone? It's a fire sale. It is a bloodbath in the top lane. Casey wanted to take as many Barons away from G2 as possible. But we have to go all the way back to this fight in mid. Look at the angle from Broken Blade and Yike. Mickey comes in with the engaged follow-up. Broken Blade keeps them in place, though. The ultimate from Targamus is good to keep Saken alive, but the Shockwave can't do much to turn it around. Cabo doesn't have any rage stored up in the tank. Doesn't have the ultimate available and it is just a one-sided fight for G2. But the re-engage from KC is spectacular. They chase G2 down, who have nothing left. All of the ultimates have been used. Everything is, is gone. And so Casey's just looking to get pick after pick, but we'll oh, straight yeah. back into the action. Explosive cast, beautiful. Saken's caught out. The Orianna's caught out. Take away the Baron, sure, but G2 keep taking away lives from KC to make this a more even game. Buff also likely going to go over. The gold has basically been equalized. G2 going to put themselves on sole point. KC have shown some impressive fights. I love the confidence that we have been seeing from this KC squad. They seem much more coordinated, even if it was a bit overzealous towards the end of that skirmish. Yeah. They were able to get so many Barons off of G2. You can see only a thousand gold is the Baron oh. power play. The G2 are unrelenting in their aggression. Bow and Targmas lucky to get out. In a turret next on the menu is for G2. Four members approach mid. Bow's trying to defend, but 
How ambitious is he right now? Sonic Wave goes to a miss. Inner turret drops on down. The onslaught with, I think we've got one Baron left remaining. Of course, it was Broken Blade who still survives. So with that one Baron push, Casey are getting onslaught. Explosive cast. See you later. Right, gonna flank, drag away to safety. That. Oh, nice in danger. Oh, nice. Flag and drag. The timing comes oh. back. Top loss. Oh, it's clapped. Everybody, you know the story. You know the legend. They might look good from KC, but then you clap your hands, put them together, and the deed is done. The shockwave was so good from Seiken, but the ultimate from Caps was even better. And just like that, G2 will end this game. He performed out of his mind in winter, and he continues to do so again in spring. G2 may have looked out in the early game, but never, ever doubt them as their mid-game continues to flourish. 3-0 at the end of the first week. That's G2. Caps, man. I really thought Saken had found the shockwave to win them another fight, but then he just goes and one-ups him. Caps rated undisputed best mid laner last split, and he's looking to do the same here. 3-0 on the weekend. It's just insane. Any playmaking champion, put it on him, and Caps will show you how it's done. It's funny, we're talking about Han Summer on the Smolder. We're talking about Broken Blades, Gragas. What is Skype going to do on this job? And in I mean, those fights consistently, Caps was showing us two, three, four man ulti. We also talked about in the draft the Wombo combo. And yep. we got to see it twice. One in that mid lane play that secured them the ban, and then once to end the game. Really fun comp coming out from G2. Nothing but praise overall from KC. Uh, they did show a lot of promising things, but I think that limited engage made it harder for them to push the lead that they already had. Very true. Ladies and gentlemen, though, you can have your save. You vote for your key of play of the game at LEC on X. Is it Yike, Caps, or Mickey X? It's Caps. It's uh, Caps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some insane engages. Yike on there is interesting, but the Cataclysm is helped set up later in the game, mid-game. But let's be real, it's Caps. <laughs> it's almost it's, certainly caps. It's caps. I mean, G2, undefeated. I mean, I will say, of course, uh, Casey had a challenging schedule this weekend, right? Rip. They did win out in their first game, but then Fnatic into G2, not easy opponents. But I think they showed some really promising things. And I think they're a team worth being excited about coming into winter, especially when so many were still skeptical after their 10th place finish. I mean, again, look, what, what remains, water is wet. Apparently it's not, by the way, but <laughs> G2 is still G2. I think the most exciting thing here is the fact that we see this talent split on split performing out of their mind. Like, Broken Blade obviously had a, a rough start to winter with his laning phase, but then scaled up. Got a good better start here today. Oh, for sure. Caps has continued on his performance from winter as well. And then we look at, like, well, the rest of G2, how are they functioning? Bots performed a lot better. I think Hunt Summer and Mickey, apart from some moments in the, in the, in the game, but the lane was really good. Oh, yeah. The lane, the 2v2, was exceptional. And I mean, as EU fans, that this is the performance they want to see as one of Europe's MSI representatives yeah. already, right? They just hope it translates. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's what, what everyone keeps telling me. They're like, yeah, G2's great now. You get excited for them. But how do they translate? And that's going to be the big stage. question, right? Right yeah. now, Caps is obviously in amazing form. Yeah. The question is, can they keep that uh, level of play continued as we continue throughout uh, spring? Well, an absolute pleasure to cast them as the only undefeated team as we round out week number one of spring. Thank you to Bettius for standing by as we go to Law on stage with Hans Summer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Great cast for this game, of course. And Steven, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Congrats on winning this one. I was watching the beginning of the game, as all of us were, I guess, uh, thinking it's Monday Fun Day again for G2 Esports. Throwing co for content again. Tell me about this one. We know that Smolder is hard in the early game, but you guys took it a bit too far. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was Monday, so uh, <laughs> it's a big challenge for us uh, in the Mondays, it looks like. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, talking specifically about this game, yeah. I think the early game, we kind of messed up some things uh, and, they, uh, uh, and they got ahead. Uh, um, personally, I was very confident to still win the game because I okay. had uh, I had a lot of uh, stacks going on in the early game, and uh, I feel like if nothing happens, which nothing happens after mm -hmm. a certain point, uh, zero six for like I don't know ten minutes it felt like, then the game is just uh, uh, good for uh, Smolder. <laughs> uh, 
the champion looks uh, quite uh, strong when he gets to uh, it farm, does yeah, yeah. interesting champion we'll talk about this one a bit later i don't want to take any credit uh, to what casey did today of course a much better showing than what they displayed in winter did you expect them to be so proactive on the map and maybe to challenge you that much uh, yeah, I feel like in the early game they played uh, quite uh, quite well. Yeah. And, uh, the dragon uh, fight uh, they executed it well, so we all uh, we all uh, collapsed uh, there. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, props to them for the early game. Yeah. All right, last question for you, Hans, because we have all the fun about G2 Esports, throwing for content and everything, but I think it can be a bit of a headache for your coach and your coaching staff. What do you think Dylan is going to say after this one? Uh, guys, uh, could I be uh, more precise <laughs> in some of the plays? All right. uh, I think uh, we definitely uh, felt that we were stronger than we were in uh, some of the fight. Some of the fight, no, there was just one fight, basically mm -hmm. a dragon fight. I guess they were um, maybe stronger than us, <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> maybe we're not really honest with uh, ourselves, or right. uh, I don't really re recall exactly how was the game state, but. It is part of the process when you go to G2 Esports, actually, the heart attacks. We have Yike on the other side in PGL with shocks. Anything you think of his performance this week overall? What did you think of your jungler? He wanted to oh. go back on carry champions, you put it back on tank. I don't think he's <laughs> supposed to have fun with you guys. Tell well, me. <laughs> well, I think your jungler, uh, Yike is uh, pretty strong. He can play uh, uh, everything, uh, but he hasn't uh, brought a single tree yet. Uh, right. Uh, are you planning to uh, bring them back? <laughs> Oof. Are you planning on bringing the trees back? Yike. Over to you, Shox. For PGL. Thank you, Hans. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs>